fun. We're recording. Hello, this is Florian from the Travel Exchange. Hello there, and we're doing a little video podcast about sustainable travel, sustainable travel ideas, and also kind of, you know, what's happening post COVID. This is an interesting time we are entering. Uh, we are here in Missoula, Montana. Um, it's a wonderful destination and we have, yeah, we had a lot of fun tonight. We are right next to this great river. What's the name of the river? Oh, the Clark Fork River. Clark Fork River. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're in the spring. It's pretty high and uh, I think the travel and tourism season just started here in the US. Uh, we see a lot of people traveling across country with their RVs, uh, cars, family travel going to the national parks, going to other places, visiting towns like Missoula. Yeah, and so we wanted to devote a little bit this time to kind of ideas and sustainable travel, what, what we see, what we could do better. And of course, I wear my travel hat as a tourism professional and marketer, but I want to also kind of expand this conversation in general about global warming and what's happening, what we're seeing. And I think we have seen the pandemic was a really big challenge for um, us as an industry or for the world. But I think the really bigger challenge is, is global warming. And it's uh, how, we, how do we address it? How do we, how do we address climate change? And we won't have all the answers today, but I want to have a conversation and have here with me, Margo Stoney. Well, Margo, why don't you do, uh, introduce yourself, who you are and um, you know, what you want to tell us. Sure, yes, thank you for having me. My name is Margo Stoney. I live here in beautiful Missoula, Montana. I am a graphic designer and I've been working with Florian and the Herman Global team for about two years. And I've dedicated my life as a designer to helping essentially save the planet and uh, help brands and nonprofits and groups around the world um, trying to reduce their carbon footprint and just live more sustainably to help and save the planet. So. Yeah, thank you for having me today. Great, and it's a, it's a really challenging task and initiative and I admire you actually saying I'm taking my life initiative to be really this responsible person or try to be responsible, to really be aware of the environment, of the things, the, the changes and what we can do. And what I especially like with you, Margo, is like, um, I think you provide education with your background to your clients, your customers, um, kind of, what are simple things you can do, for example, uh, when you when you print, uh, let's say, a visitor's guide, or if you if you create a des designer brochure, or if you do signage, because you just have just kind of a cool things, uh, cool ideas where you say this is just what you should be aware of. Can you just explain a little bit about that? Yeah, what are doing? sure. Yeah. As a graphic designer, one big thing that we have to think about, um, especially in print media, is the materials that we're using. And, uh, you know, for making a sign, it's really easy to go and you've probably seen Coroplast. It's kind of, it looks like cardboard, but it's made of plastic and it's a really easy thing to make a sign out of. But um, it's not recyclable, it's not made out of recycled material, and it's going to go to the landfill. Uh, same thing, business cards, brochures, uh, you know, if you're using paper that's, you know, virgin paper that's not made from recycled materials or sustainable sources, it's basically going it's basically using up all of these resources. So, um, you know, for me as a designer, and I try and guide my clients on this, is trying to kind of consider where your materials are coming from and where they're gonna go, the life cycle of it. So if you can have a sign that's made of wood instead of plastic, or if you can have a sign that you know you might need to change a number on it or something like that, just thinking ahead about, um, you know, how can you do that without needing to make a whole new sign? Or how can you, talk to your printer about using 100% recycled paper when you're making a brochure or a rack card. Um, there's just little things like that that, uh, you know, once you tell one person about it and they tell somebody about it and then you see the thing on the back that says this was printed on recycled paper or using, you know, forestry, um, sustainable forestry practices, um, it's kind of contagious and it's good to just kind of start where you can. and. Um, you know, that's how I guide my clients through that and how, you know, we've worked together, you know, to, to make some really good choices and guide folks on how to do better. Yeah. And we, you know, we talk, we talk about sustainable travel, but we talk about also environmental design, you know, what's, what tourism destinations can do. Um, I want to hear your personal story a little bit, Margo. How did you get into this to really saying I'm dedicating my life to really doing be carbon neutral as much as possible as I can. And I know you ride, ride your bicycle, you, you know, you, you really 
doing it. I mean, I, I admire it, you know, and I, I love that that you have this mission. But how did you come to this? What, what was the, what, did you have an event in the past where you said, I got to do this and this is what I want to do? Sure. I mean, like a lot of people, I was working in a, you know, in a corporate environment. I was, you know, just doing design because it was my career. And I started kind of having this uh, almost a guilty feeling about how what my work was, it was not contributing to climate change and to not contributing to making the planet any better. It was actually making it worse. And I had this phase where I thought, okay, I need to go. I need to go back to school. I need to get a biology degree or I need to, you know, learn environmental science in order to like actually make a difference with climate change and with helping the planet. And then I started working with a conservation client and uh, it made me realize that I could actually use my skills as a, as a designer to work with these scientists or work with these, um, you know, these uh, conservation groups and things like that to kind of help spread the word, you know, some people are really good at doing research and some people are good at taking that research and basically translating it into a message that the general population can understand and take action around. And I kind of had this revelation probably seven or eight years ago that I didn't need to go back to school and I didn't need to be like a researcher or a scientist to, to make a difference. I could use the skills that I already had as a designer to, to make a change. So that was, that was my story. Yeah great story and what I love what you said you don't have to be a scientist to understand this and address it right I mean scientists are here to really give us the latest research on what the impacts are but I think by just changing habits in sustainable travel or, or, or work environments that already can make a huge difference maybe uh, we cannot change a hundred things today but if you just say there's one thing that you can change uh, what would you recommend is this one thing that you think consumers should do to be a little bit better steward on this planet? Just one thing. I have to pick one thing. Um, every time you buy something, think about where it came from and where it's going to go when you're done with it. Um, so if you're buying um, a bottle of water, uh, think about that plastic actually came from petroleum. It's, you know, came from the ground. It's not a renewable resource. And uh, when you're done with it, it uh, in theory could get recycled, but a lot of plastic they're saying nowadays only 10% of plastic is getting recycled. So just thinking about uh, where it came from and where it's going and who it's harming uh, by using that and just kind of help you think about reducing your use and single use things especially. Mm -hmm. So kind of trying to figure out where it came from and where it's going for any kind of product you consume, like, like for example a phone, plastic yeah. bottle. Mm -hmm. Furnitures, right? Furniture, yeah. Ikea, where does uh, where does the wood come from, right? <laughs> yeah. And where is it going when you don't use it anymore? Yeah, yeah. That's, these are good points. Yeah, so I want to go a little bit more into the um, kind of sustainable travel atmosphere. We're coming out of the pandemic, but not saying we will have a pandemic or endemic ongoing. I mean, I don't think this is going away, but I think we are tempering out with vaccines and methods to kind of really come back to uh, the, the travel fund and the travel industry. Um, but so my personal thing is what I always say I want to pay attention to is uh, the, the type of transportation and travel, right? And think about it, you have so many opportunities, uh, ways of travel today. You can either travel with a bicycle, which is very carbon neutral, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can travel with a car and go on a family road trip. You can travel with an RV. You can travel by plane and I'm always struggling um, what's the best way to kind of consume uh, like uh, reduce the consumption of fuel or energy to go from A to B right and maybe just we want to address a few things uh, for example someone said earlier to say well if we just reduce the speed limit from 70 miles per hour to 55 right you would save 25 percent of the fuel um, or if we, we, we know the, the story with hybrids, right? If you drive a hybrid, um, that's probably better with the fuel consumption or like a small car versus a truck and, and so on. Um, but I want to get your feedback on it. What do you think from a transportation point of view, besides of not everyone can ride a bicycle in the world, <laughs> which I understand, it would be great if we could, but uh, what is a good way to travel? Like to reduce carbon offsets to be a good steward? Any ideas? Yeah, uh, I mean, I can kind of tell you what I've been trying to do and nobody's perfect. The, 
you know, the name of the game is to just try and make small changes and do whatever you can. Uh, for example, I just uh, finished a road trip with some friends here in Missoula and you know, we all have kind of older cars. I have an, a small F SUV and we decided to rent a car, um, you know, just a small something compact, something that was newer and was going to have good gas mileage. And, um, you know, even that little thing kind of made me feel better because, I, you know, we spent a lot less money on gas and also, um, you know, fewer carbon emissions from using a newer vehicle that was, you know, more uh, fuel efficient. And, uh, you know, once we got to our destination, you know, we tried to stay somewhere where we knew that we were going to be able to walk to restaurants and, um, you know, to recreation and to getting, you know, we wanted to go out for drinks or something. Uh, so that was really nice. Once we arrived at our destination, we were able to walk a lot of places. Um, and then I think I probably heard this from Harmon Global at one point, but if you are going to fly somewhere, try and find a flight that has the least amount of layovers. And so, you know, Missoula, Montana is kind of a difficult place to find flights, uh, you know, <laughs> direct flights. And so if I'm kind of planning a, a trip where I don't really, you know, I say I want to go somewhere warm and I want it to be, you know, on the beach, you know, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to have three layovers and try and get to Cabo or somewhere, um, you know, I can get this direct flight to San Diego. And of course it's less expensive, but it's also taking off and landing. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that when you take off and land in an airplane. It takes up a lot more, um, you know, it's a lot more emissions than if you're just doing a direct flight somewhere. So those are kind of the few things that I've been trying to think about. And then at home, yeah, I just, I try and ride my bike and I'm fortunate enough to live somewhere uh, where I can do that. And if you don't, if you live somewhere rural, try and, uh, you know, do as many, trips into town at the same time, you know, go to the grocery store and go, you know, pick up your prescriptions and, and things like all on the same day. So um, there's a lot of little things you can do. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, reduce the amount of fuel as much as you can. Um, it's really kind of the, whether by airplane or if it's by car or bus or whatever it is, right? So, I mean, I know that I don't have the research in front of me, but I know the most environmental friendly type of travel besides of the icicles is is, uh, is traveling by train. Um, oh yes. And I know that here in the U.S. we don't have much train system or travel for for vacation, right? Um, but yeah, so I think I want to kind of address a little bit. Transportation is one thing. Um, what can hotels do, for example? Hotels. I'm thinking naturally for kind of reducing the carbon footprint is naturally the, the heating in hotels and buildings because the buildings in general uh, emit a lot of uh, yeah carbon carbon offset either with greenhouse gases uh, by just have, by having electric uh, heating and that goes to a coal fire plant or whatever it is like we have emissions because of heating but naturally what's think hotels really could pay a lot pay a lot of attention to reducing carbon offset on uh, Kind of having good windows insulations you know ex making explaining the customer um hey you know we don't want you to crank up the heat all night because this is not good and education is a big part of it do you have any other suggestions in terms of what the lodging industry could do that's a tough one because yeah. there are so many um you know chains and things like that where there's a you know a standard and it's hard to you know make like kind of systemic within the hotel and the hospitality industry. Uh, something that is interesting that I saw, I was in Florida and we were staying at a, at a big hotel with my parents. And you know, when you're on the beach, you wanna have your, your sliding door open, your big windows because you want the fresh air. And then there was a sign on there that said, if the, there must have been a sensor on it and it says if this door is open the air conditioning will automatically turn off and I appreciated that because that could be a little thing that maybe in the past you know people just they weren't being conscious or sometimes people get to hotels and they're just like who cares about you know I don't have to pay the electric bill and um, so just like that those little educational things where maybe from a hotel standpoint it was to save money but at the end of the day it's saving money but also saving on having to use that energy so um, but I, you know, I think that it, it could be a while because it, it involves changing behavior of, of hotel guests and um, and kind of that mindset. So um, I'll have to keep an eye on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this is a tricky uh, part. I think um, when you talk to businesses, 
and I, I run a business too. I think the environmental revolution would be ultimately to make to, to develop policies or consulting initiatives to tell business owners if you apply this this is how you can save money in the long term versus saving the planet is rather made for them to keep the doors open lights on is uh, this is how you save money and on top of it you also uh, help reducing carbon offset I think that would be the formula that I think uh, in the hospitality industry is, is really important on that. Um, the other things that I, I just uh, see is I think uh, what you said earlier, I think education is a big thing for the traveler. And we talked about this earlier too. Um, what's your take on why should we travel? Why should we travel? Because we understand naturally, let's say 99% of, of the travels we do, we have some carbon offset, right? But why do you think we should travel? I'm just asking you that question. Uh, for me, travel has always been about perspective. And sometimes I gain that perspective when I go to a really big city or I go to a town that has, or a country that has a different culture than where I'm from. And if I'm traveling somewhere outdoors, it makes me realize how vast the world is that we live in. And it just gives me an appreciation and makes me really eager to save it all because it's just we only <laughs> it's corny we say we only have one planet but it's true and when you go and you know meet somebody in another town on the other side of the world or you um, see a really tall mountain that's just beautiful and makes you want to cry it's you know it, it gives you this appreciation and kind of this obligation to to protect it and um, I think travel you know getting out and seeing that for everybody is, is helpful and hopefully they can feel a similar perspective when they when they see that yeah like my favorite um, thing is the, the quote for me it's not a quote but the way how I and how I see travel today someone else said it's not for me but I totally agree uh, travel I think today is for me a therapy like you go to travel to heal yourself and um, you know it's interesting I studied tourism and in the books of tourism management in the university was travel is about recreation you go there to go away from work and recreate and it's a leisure and then kind of when I started working in the 2000s travel was becoming the lifestyle like it's like you want to be seen you're special you you want to show to tell the world that you're going and hiking that mountain and it's all about this lifestyle thing right and then I think travel now is changing again and then maybe post pandemic and I think travel is um, you know more of it, like in social media it was maybe more of contribution right so to say I'm choosing a restaurant because I, I like to support the small business or I go there because I care about this community and I'm I would rather spend money with them versus them it's kind of this contribution Airbnb is actually doing a great job because you get to know the owners you get to know who they are you get to know their, their profile and their reviews so that travel is slowly moving into this contribution but I think the final stage of travel is um, what I see is, is ultimately that, that transformation of people and that's really hopefully that I see in the future is when people travel and we're trying to very hard with our clients and, and visit your parks and on travel and all these places the, the brands and platforms you're building to create content is can we transform people to say I know it's gonna be bad to travel you're doing carbon offset you know it's not it's not you cannot uh, wish that away it's it's gonna occur but if you bring out people to special places where they see the experience of the planet changing and the wildfires or whatever it is that hopefully you go back and start thinking deeply about what's really what's happening on, on this planet and I think travel becomes this transformation that you transform to become a better steward and I think that's my hope I don't know if that's gonna happen but I think we have a chance and post pandemic I've been just talking to tourism destinations we see there's a huge huge demand this year and probably in future year for traveling traveling to places that are lesser known and seeing them but it also comes with challenges because uh, we are at the beginning of the spring and we already see people rushing into the same place 
to just see that. Um, and it's the, the over tourism card is back quickly, where we say we have way too many people in one place. It's not sustainable. It's not good for the businesses. It's not good for the for the visitor, for the residents. So we naturally, that's always a threat. I think we see in travel that's that's coming. But yeah, I mean, I'm asking you a very challenging question. You can <laughs> say whatever you want, Margo. But but do you think sustainable travel? And what we talked about today do you think does it does it have a chance like look at the next 10 years do we have a chance here or what, what do you think what are you seeing on the world side what's happening we see more and more natural disasters right we see more wildfires we see kind of um, political climates changing also around the world i want to ask you what, what's your what's your gut telling you do we have a chance to to really contribute with sustainable travel I think that if you think about it as intentional travel, uh, where people are traveling with more intention and um, you know looking for more of the experience, and like you said, kind of um, like therapy, instead of just going out to snap a picture on Instagram and say, "Okay, I've been here, here, and here," and, and thinking, you know, staying at a place longer, or um, you know, interacting with locals or supporting local businesses, and just being more mindful about the places that they're going and the effect that they have on the local environments and on the local communities um, to me i think that that is more uh, you can call that a form of sustainable travel and i think that that's maybe more um, you know more logical than putting like a like a carbon footprint or like a carbon neutral stamp on on sustainable travel because um, there's so many different ways to look at it so uh, and i think that that's you know without I, I tend to run high on the eco anxiety scale and sometimes I talk myself out of travel because I, I feel bad about flying or I feel bad about you know driving you know to another state but um, I think that as long as we make those trips like I was saying um, you know intentional and something that's really you know benefiting yourself and the community and you know those around you that you know we can call that sustainable travel and um, just be really mindful about the way that we're doing it yeah well, another thing is what I like I said, travel is therapy, but I also think travel is this cultural exchange and it's the monetary exchange as well, but the cultural exchange. And I think um, that will that will always be there. That, I, I don't think that will go away. I think it will change in terms of how we how we experience travel, the experiences. Um, yeah, so I think um, sustainable travel is a, is a tricky field. We have been talking a long time about this since the 1980s. Um, this is nothing new, right? So I, I want to just, I wanted to challenge our, both of us today to say, what are the things we, we see changing? What are the things we can do? And I think we brought some good examples into this. Um, I think, um, you know, we are in, in the point of transformation right now after the pandemic. And uh, hopefully, and that's my hope, is that we do have a chance uh, on this. Um, I honestly think we cannot change the whole world by just overnight. I think it's slowly by slowly by really doing a really good part of this world to provide education which I think is really huge um, and meaningful meaningful life right so you think about you you are you only once on this planet and what can you do to really uh, make this a greater planet for future generations and and I'm fully engaged and want to do this um, I'm doing everything I can it's not easy to be honest and it's really hard to change lifestyles but it's really what I want to do um, if I am successful or not with kind of running a business and so that that remains a challenge too to be really fully neutral and common sustainable but we'll do the best do you did we, as a final closing do you want to say anything to the tourism industry anything you want to get off the chest I think that if we all work together on educating travelers and um, you know just trying to make a difference you know it's overwhelming like we've said but just making those little changes those little micro movements towards towards the better i think that you know little little changes can lead to big things so that's my closing thought <laughs> great well i love the closing well thanks so much for tuning in today with the travel exchange this is florin herman thanks for margo stoney um you want to just mention your website of your business in case people are interested in looking at 
creative designs? <laughs> Sure. Um, so I have a small graphic design studio called High Mountain Creative, and you can find me on Instagram at High Mountain Creative and on my website at highmountaincreative.com. So yes, thank you. Great. Wonderful. And stay in touch. We will have more of these sessions in the future.